Ben the Pat Tester here. Hope you're well, everybody. Another quick video for you this morning, uh, talking about the insulation resistance test and um, whether it should be done at 500 volt DC or whether it should be done at 250 volt DC. A lot of chatter going on on the forums online. Some people do it all at 500, some people do it all at 250. Um, so I thought I'd just make a quick video just to kind of get my take on it and what I do, and hopefully this might help you out uh, if you guys are starting out in the pack testing world or uh, we can have a chat in the comments and, and, and what you want to do. So the insulation resistance test, it basically it, it applies a test voltage of either 500 volts or 250 volt DC between the live conductors and the protect, protective conductor uh, being the earth and then it measures the resistance and then it'll either give you a pass or, or a fail. Um, now the, the the main thing is 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 whether it should be done at 500 or 250 because there's certain items um, to take for instance extension leads surge protected extension leads um, if you do a, a insulation resistance at 500 volts DC then um, you probably get a fail um, because what's happening is the increased voltage um, that is, that's being applied during the test um, will will cause the surge extension lead to detect that and then it will discharge it and then it will give you a, a low reading to giving you a fail. So normally when you're doing a, uh, a surge protected extension lead, you will test at 250 volt DC and then you'll, you'll, you'll not get a problem. Um, that is also referred to in the code of practice. So this is the IET code of practice, which I work to. It's a guide. It, it, it's not the law. You don't have to, um, you know, subscribe to this. You don't have to operate to this. But this is seen as kind of the um, one of the better ways of, of, you know, conforming to PAT testing requirements. And this is the IET code of practice in service and inspection. This is the fifth edition, which came out um, back end of uh, 2020. Okay, um, you can get this on, um, I got this from wiring, wiringregulations.net. There's a few places uh, you can buy it from. Um, paper copy is always best. If you, if you see the digital copy online, it probably doesn't conform to copyright and it's probably been scanned and been sold unauthorised. So always get the paper copy. It's always a good thing. You can relate to it when you're out on a job as well. So that was with surge extensions. Now, what it also says... Um, is if we if we just go back to here so it says in the code of practice the recommended test voltage is 500 volt DC um, and the instrument should be capable of maintaining the test voltage under tests um, so how I do it is most equipment I test including IT equipment I test at 500 volt DC so that includes computers um, monitors, printers, uh, things like that. Now, other people will tell you different things. They might have been trained to uh, apply a, a 250 volt DC uh, insulation resistance test to IT equipment. I've always done it at 500 volt DC. Uh, and for the five years that I've been pat testing, never had one single problem. Um, you know, pe there's a people think that um, yeah, it might damage the equipment. Years ago on older equipment, it might have done. There is a British standard which was brought out back in the late 90s, which um, means that IT equipment should be resistant to that 500 volt DC and you shouldn't get any damage or, or such like it does say in the code of practice here, some equipment may not be suitable for insulation resistance testing at 500 volt, uh, particularly equipment with sensitive components. <coughs> um, and it does say on there about um, dimmers, theatrical dimmers um, and things like that. So when you've got some really sensitive equipment like that, um, always refer to the manufacturer's manual or give them a quick call um, just to see. Or sometimes it will have on there... Um, 
you know test at 250 um you know don't do load tests things like that um and it will say on there um the thing with you know, if people want to do it equipment at 250 volt dc the problem with that is that then because they're not uh applying a higher voltage you might then uh, your machine might miss out and not detect a fault um so th there's there is that to bear in mind that you know you're not stress testing the equipment um as you should be um so that's just one thing to bear in mind so it's my opinion like i said i've always done it at 500 volt dc never had a problem never had a problem um you also see it says in the code of practice here some equipment may have other filtering components that have a similar effect or cause of fail uh, and this is quite normal and it doesn't always signal that an item is defective um, also when you're doing a 500 volt dc test you might find on things that have elements either heaters or ovens or dishwashers that they'll fail an insulation test at 500 volt DC, or they'll they'll give you a low reading. It might give you like a three or four mega ohm reading, um, you know, when the when the limit is one. So it just kind of um, draws your attention to it. So it doesn't fail as such, but you you might want to look into why it's giving you a lower reading. That could be the build up of moisture on on heating elements inside items, which um, throw off the readings so what you can always do with there is you can always then do a supplementary leakage test um just to back up and just to kind of give peace of mind that you know that the item is safe um so that that's my view on things my view is it should be done 500 volt dc um most of the time even on it equipment let me know what you think uh, in the comments. Also, click subscribe and uh, we can chat from there. Have a look at some of my other videos. If there's anything you want to see particularly, then uh, give us a shout and let us know. Thanks for watching.